Hey everybody, welcome to Working Horses with Jim. I'm Jim and I've spent the last 40 years farming and logging with draft horses. In this seven part series, I'm going to be covering some of the basic essentials of owning and caring for draft horses. I know there are many different ways of doing things. My goal is to just to show you what has worked well for me and what I wish I had known starting out. So each Friday we'll have a new segment of this series. But stay tuned for, on Mondays and Wednesdays for our normal videos about our everyday life of working with horses. Hi everybody and welcome to Working Horses with Jim. Today, in this series that we're doing, I'm going to be talking about driving a pair of horses. Last week we talked about driving a single horse and uh, we have had a very busy week this week. Uh, we've, we've had our, our son and our daughter-in-law and our four grandkids up and we've been very busy with them. And so I haven't thought too much about the videos and what we've been doing. And so I'm, I'm sure there were some things from last week I probably ought to, should have gone over, but I can't remember anything of that. Do you remember anything, Brenda, that we might have thought of from last week? I can't really recall, but I know that we have not done a real great job of answering all the comments this week, but we hope to get back at it. But we did enjoy our grandkids and our family. So today we want to talk about driving a pair of horses. Now, like I've said in other videos of, of late, we've been kind of focusing on the newcomer, the person that just bought a team of horses or their single horse or, or just getting back into horses, I haven't done this for quite some time. And I guess as I go about today, I'm going to uh, focus a lot on that person that maybe have just got their horse, just bought a horse or a team of horses from a, a sale. A lot of people, when they want horses, they go to a sale to buy one. And that's a, that's a fine way of doing it most of the time, but you don't really know um, really what you're getting. So, so often when you get a horse at the sale, you've got to go at it very slowly and find out what this horse is capable of and find out what you're capable of. So we'll, we'll be talking about that. Um, I want to talk about my, my lines, the difference between a single horse and a team with the lines. A lot of people have asked about that. Um, so we will get um, the two Pertrons out today, I guess. Uh, this morning, we, I actually worked all of them this morning um, to exercise them. Um, that's why they're all still harnessed up, but we'll probably just take the Pertrons out to, to uh, explain what we're doing as far as driving. So let's get them hitched up and then I'll explain, start with how the lines work for a team of horses. Get them up. I'd like to comment on a comment we had this past week, I don't know, or whoops, not too long ago. Actually, a couple comments. They were talking about bridling horses up, and they were suggesting that we actually train our horses to lower their heads. And, you know, there's a point up here where you can press on them and, and slowly teach them to drop their heads. That is a really good idea, too. Um, I don't do it, I guess partially because I just don't choose to take the time to do it. I usually have no problem at all harnessing any horse I've ever had, so I haven't bothered taking the time to do that. But if you want to take the time, that'd be a great thing to do, especially if you're a shorter person like, like Brenda. It would really help to be able to put a bridle on a horse if that horse would lower, lower his head. All right, back up. Back up. Uh, um, quite often when my horses come out to go to work, they might be thirsty, and a lot of people don't even realize this. They have the bit that we've talked about before in their mouths, um, and so they don't think a horse can drink with a bridle on, and I'm here to tell you that's definitely not, the, not true. They most definitely can drink when they have a bridle on. Um, sure, it's a little bit more comfortable, and I'm sure they'd rather just have a halter on when they're drinking, but as far as uh, being able to, absolutely, they can drink with a, with a bridle on. I'm going to just hitch them up and then I'm going to explain about the lines. Everything I'm doing here is, is basically exactly the same as I would have done in last week's video with the single horse.
hopefully as I go along, I can think of some, some things that are different to talk about. Here's a situation right here that just happened to come across. Now this happens rarely, but it most definitely happens. And that's partially because I have a D-ring harness, but there's other straps, snaps on all kinds of harnesses. And so this horse has been, Ken has been standing here for a couple hours now since he worked this morning. And as you can see, his lead rope is caught in his pole snap. Now, this could be bad. If I was to unhitch his halter without seeing this, and sometimes it's actually hitched on the other side, and so it's harder to see. And then you think you have him unhitched, and then you go and back him up, and then all of a sudden you realize, whoops, he's caught in this, which could be, it could be trouble. So you've got to be careful about that. I know some people, some people when they unhitch their pole strap, they'll actually hitch it up here to get it out of the way. Sometimes when I'm out in the field and using a harness without needing these, I will do this. It's nice, it's out of the way. Um, but generally I do not, I just let them hang. And yes, there is a chance, there's a risk of him getting caught in that, the lead rope. I've never seen that before. Yeah, it's not that common. Yeah. I kind of thought he was going back up on me. Um, I could see he was ready to back up, but um, I just put the halter on, the bridle on really fast, and we talked about that last video. Um, there's most definitely a chance he would have done that. So he's right in here, and I'm right here, and the line's right there, so I just tap into place. Bye. When I come in with my second horse, I'll just let them loose like that. So in case they do want water, they'll drink. And if they're not thirsty, they won't drink. But there's an example right there. He's got his bit on and it's most definitely um, quite easy for him to drink if he wants to have water. Enough, Ken? Take your sweet time. You usually do. Ken's my, by far, my slowest drinker. And it's not that he's a slow drinker, he's just a dubber. He'll stand there and, and just play with it and take his time. All right, come on, ain't good all day. How about you? Oh. And you'll let him have more when he gets done. Yes. Okay, now I'm going to hitch Ken's check rein, and then I'm going to explain something. So what I have is a whole another set of lines, driving lines that I'm going to explain to you. What I'm going to do is lay these on the floor so you can clearly see how they work. This might be easier than me trying to explain it on the horse, although I will do that too but let's do it this way first. Okay, so. What we have is one long line. The outside line of a team lines are full length. So this strap here goes through that buckle. Maybe come up even closer. It goes through that buckle, but it's still one continuous line. As you can see, Eli has sewed them together to make this one continuous line. So this is on the outside of the lines. So these will go to the outside bit. So as that's sitting there, this is the outside bit that these lines, the continuous line goes. So you're saying that this is one line and this one is well, this is one we're not there yet so yes this is the outside of the of the set of lines and it's one continuous line over here we have one continuous line also it goes through the buckle but it's still one continuous line it's sewed together right there and it's one continuous line so that will go 
So that will go to the outside of the horse. This line right here is a short line. It starts right at the buckle. So this will go and actually cross over and hitch onto the, that horse's bit. And this other line will cross over and go to that horse's bit. So what happens when I pull on the right hand line, I'm pulling off the two horses on the right hand bit. So I'm pulling here, I'm pulling on both of those lines. And when I wanna turn left or turn or to ha, I'm pulling on the left hand, left hand line and I'm pulling on those two lines there. One on the left hand horse, horse's side and one on the left hand bit of the right hand horse's side. So as you can see, these cross over. So as we come back to the team that's hitched up, it's exactly like I just showed there. We have the long lines that go continuously back to the whole, to the end of the lines, that one there, and this one over here to the outside bit. And then on the short lines, they come from the buckle, crosses over the two lines to this bit, and this one from the buckle crosses over the two lines to this bit. So when we're pulling on the one to turn left, as we're pulling this line here, we're also pulling this line. So we're pulling them both together and vice versa. You know, you're pulling like that. That's good, I like that. Do you think we made that clear enough for yeah, people? Yeah, that's, that's good for me. You can I understand it. Yeah. We will head out. It's raining a little bit, just sprinkling. But we will head out and drive these two around. And maybe as we're driving, I can try and think of some things that we have didn't talk about. Maybe on the last week's video, we're driving a single horse and the difference between driving a single and a double. Um, one thing and I said before, it is so important to be able to get hands on to drive. Um, you can watch this video and get some pointers, hopefully, but you're never gonna really learn how to drive by watching a video. You really need to have hands on. There's so much, so many things that you can't even explain on a video, the amount of pressure that you have on the horses, things like that, that you have to have hands on. So one more reason to have a mentor or a, f a good friend that you can go to that has horses that you can teach you to drive. Or if you just bought a pair of horses, if you could find somebody that's willing to come to your place and teach you how to drive, it would be so beneficial to you. Also, if you take some of these driving classes that are available uh, you know, around the country, around the world even, um, to learn more about doing this. If you just bought a team of horses and the person at the sale that you bought it from claimed they picked your perfect horses, you can hitch them up and do anything with them. I think probably, and I've been trying to think about this this past week, um, some ideas about, about the wisest way to go about starting. Um, I, I would say that probably the best way to start would be to line drive them, which is what we're going to do today, just around your driveway, just to make sure and get a feel for them as to how well they work before you hitch them onto an implement. This isn't always done this way. Some people will hitch them right onto an implement, especially those that have maybe more experience. But if you don't have a lot of experience, it's just a simple way to find out if they're anywhere near what your, the buyer had you know, told you that these horses would do. So let's take them out and drive these two around. So quite often when I'm driving a pair of horses, not always, but quite often, I will tie their lines together. Just a simple quick knot like that. And the purpose of that is, oh, there's quite a few reasons, but uh, I've had situations where I'm actually driving along and actually have lost a line for some reason. Well, you can't lose a line when you have it tied together. You lose, you know, it drops down, but you still get it so you can grab it. Another thing that I do is when I'm, when I'm driving, and I, we explained this uh, the other time with, with Ken on the single, the lines, you still have all this extra line back here. You gotta do something with it when you're driving around. So I usually do, like I said in the last one, just like that, you know, to, to hold it, that type of thing. Well, sometimes when I have a knot like that, I'll actually just hold one line instead of two because I can. So it's less, it's less, oh, 
it's less leather in my hands. Another thing I might add, um, if, as you see, I have leather lines. Now that's a, a preference to me. I prefer and I enjoy holding leather lines. I don't want nylon lines. I don't want bio lines. Um, I really enjoy the feel of leather lines. So that's why I have leather lines. Uh, that's my preference. I mean, if you want nylon lines, if you want bio lines, um, I, I remember uh, last summer, it was two summers ago now, we were down to Andy, my neighbor's the Amish neighbor of mine. He had um, braided lines. And they were pretty nice. I'm not even sure if they were made out of leather, what they are made of, but they, they did have a really nice feel to them. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to do it, but for myself, I prefer the, the, the leather lines. What happens if you um, don't have them tied together and you lose a line and you're driving them? What will typically happen with the horses? You can most definitely be in serious trouble. I mean, if you were driving a line and you didn't have these tied, and for some reason, for whatever reason it might be, you lost the line. You know, in a matter of seconds, that line is gone. I mean, you might be on a wagon, a high wagon, and you lose that line. How are you going to get it? You've you got one line to stop your horses with. And if you go to horses, that's all it takes. You holler, ho, they're going to stop. But, uh, I mean, if worse comes to worse, you, you keep turning around and around, so you kind of go in a circle, so you won't have a, you know, they're more apt to stop in a situation like that. Um, but but then, then again, sometimes that's not true either, because sometimes you can jackknife whatever vehicle you're using. So there's a good example as to why I use lines, or why I tie a knot in my lines. And a lot of people will have a buckle in their lines, um, but the, the knot works just fine for me. Um, why are they not the same length? They are. They are? They are. They don't look like it. Yeah, they are. Oh, okay. Um, reasons for n not having a, a knot. That's a good one. And I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's bad reasons to have a knot in your lines too. Um, Put it in the comments hmm. below. Yeah, I can't really think right top of my head a bad reason to have a knot in the lines. Um, but I bet there is. I mean, you can get yourself you can trip yourself on trip yourself on the lines. Maybe you know you can get tangled up. Maybe and then you get dragged. Yeah, but that's still very unlikely. It's kind of a poor reason not to do it. And I don't. I'm not trying to say you really should hitch your lines together like this. It's just a habit I have had, and and I, I like it. So okay, so let's go out in the driveway and drive around a little bit. So much of what we're doing is exactly the same as what we did last week with with Ken. Cap step. So I had said last week that with a single horse as opposed to the team, it's actually twice as hard with the team because you have two horses instead of one. And that's somewhat true, but not completely true. It's not, it's not really always twice as hard, but sometimes it is. So when you're driving around, what you always want to do is have your team as though they were one. So to do that, you want them to be walking together. Now, it is terribly windy today, so I'm hoping this audio comes in okay. Um, so as you're walking around, and like I said, you want to have them as one. So you, to start with, you need horses that walk about the same gait. You know, if, they, if they, one walks a lot faster than the other, it's, you're gonna have troubles. These two right here, there's a huge difference in their walking speed. Buck will generally walk a lot faster than Ken. Now this morning, I took them down the road with the sled to give them some exercise because it's still too wet to do any field work here. And that kind of took a little bit of a, the spunk out of them, I guess you could say. So now, right now, they are walking quite well together. But if they're not, there are ways to adjust the lines to help that. Now, if you think back to way, where I had my lines on the floor, and if you've got a faster horse than the other one, the buckle in the center, oh, is such, oh, that you can adjust the lines, oh. The way it's set up right now is, is there's actually a little bit more pressure on Buck's bit than there is on Ken's bit. So that helps me hold him back without putting so much pressure on Ken. I cut that. 
<laughs> now, how is it that you have more pressure on Buck's bit? Let me see if I can explain it a little bit more. Just look at it like this. If you were to, if you were to slide this buckle ahead, it's going to put more pressure on this line right here and less on that center line that goes to Ken. And then on the other side of it, if you were to slide this buckle back, it's going to put more pressure on Buck's line, which is this horse here, than it would on Ken's. Oh, it's a little bit hard to explain. Yeah. I cuffed up. Now, one thing that a team could possibly do that a single horse can't do, well, sort of, uh, with, a, with a team, a lot of times they will actually spread out. Oh, I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna attempt to back them up. And it's especially the case when they're backing them up. When you back them up, they tend to spread their butts wide. These guys are pretty good, so I can probably back them up and they can stay together. But a lot of people actually run a string around their butts to hold their butts together. But let's just see how they'll back up without anything. Oh, oh back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Okay, Can't, uh, Buck is swinging a little bit. Back up here. And he knows better, so he'll swing back in place. Back up, Buck. Back, back. Stand in there, Buck. Stand in there, Buck. Stand in there, Buck. Stand in there. Now, bye. Oh, okay, let me explain something. Oh, when you have your team on a cart and you try to back them up, they're more apt to stay together because they, they have the tugs to keep them together. But when they're just walking like this and you try to back them up, um, or if you just had a loose evener back there and tried to back them up, there's nothing really solid that's gonna keep them together. So they will tend to back up quite a bit, I mean, spread quite a bit. Oh. So like I said, we were talking about having, um, you just got a pair of horses and you want to try them out. So this is a good spot to try them out and see how well they do do. Um, several things when you, when you start practicing, do a lot of stopping and starting. Don't worry about the G's and the Ha's right now. Worry about stopping and starting because that's the most, two most important things that you need to teach them or to find out if they know. And actually the hoe is the most important. And, and, and also to have them stand. You know, a lot of horses just will not stand good. Like right now, Buck is not standing that well. He normally does, but he's not standing that well. So these are things you're gonna find out almost immediately when you drive these horses. I cuffed up. Oh. So as you're driving your horses around your, your driveway, don't be too surprised if they don't act perfect. Um, and don't be discouraged if they don't act perfect. Um, perfection is not something you're always gonna achieve when you're working horses. Um, so uh, if they're misbehaving a little bit, try not to let them bother you and just kind of push on. If they're not standing good, don't try to make them stand perfect. Get them walking around again and, and, and stop them more often, but don't hold them for a very long period of time. A lot of horses, just aren't very good at just standing there for long periods of time. These guys generally would be, but even today, as you can see, they're not standing that great. The wind is blowing, it's bothering them. Uh, they just know we're not doing anything, so it bo that bothers them too, I think. So, but all I'm trying to tell you is, it's so easy for a new person to get discouraged that they're not working perfectly. And, and you've got so many things to learn in the process of working horses. Just don't let that deter you from from working horses just because it didn't work perfect for you. I cast out. Oh. Another thing I would highly suggest, do not go out on your first time on a day like this. I agree. I don't want to be out on a day like this. There's something about wind that really affects a horse. A lot of horses would just go completely crazy on a windy day like this. So um, don't, don't experiment on days like this until you're ready for potential trouble. I cuffed up. Oh, now back, back. 
Back up here. 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 Oh. You've seen my horses work. As I back these two up without a cart on them, and it, nothing to hold them from spreading, look how far they spread. That's not a sign of a, a really super pair of horses. These guys are super pair of horses in my mind, and yet they still did this. Um, some people put ropes around their butts to stop this from doing it, but there's very seldom that you have to or have any need to back them up a lot when they don't, aren't hitched to something. So don't let this worry you if your horses, you get them home and you can't back them up because it's very seldom you need to back them up like this. You know, when you're backing into a car hitch, to hitch on, sometimes you do, but even that, there's ways around that. But for your more experienced teams, is that is one good thing, an experiment for yourself. Take your team outside, don't have anything hitched to them, and attempt to back them up. See how far you can back them up without anything on. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back. Get in here. Get in here, back. Get in here, back. Get in here, back. Back. Get in here, back. Back. Get in here. Get in here. Now back. It's a lot harder than you'd expect. Back. Back. Get in here. Get in here, back. Get in here, back. Get your back in here. Get your back in here. Back. Back. Bah, bah, bah. Get in there, Buck. Get in there, Buck. Bah, 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 bah. Get in there, Buck. Buck, get in there. Buck, get in here. Buck, get in here. Get in here. Buck, get in here. Bah, 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 bah. Oh. So there you have it. Ask them someone that should know how to back a pair of horses up and do a really great job, and they spread themselves the whole but whole way back. So, um, just to let you know what happens to me and, and the, the rest of us too. Okay, it's starting to rain even more. Brenda's getting wet, and uh, we're gonna head in the barn. I cast up. This morning, my grandkids are still here. They left this morning, but uh, we were out exercising these two, and and we did a little fooling around with the kids and we're going to take you we're going to take you to that video even now Oops. Oh, one thing, one thing I want to caution people when they're line driving around, especially um, if they're feeling pretty good. Oh, when you head back to the barn, don't be surprised if they try if they try to run on you. Um, I told you about this in that other video. If they start going too fast and you're having trouble holding them, just that little bit of seesaw in your hands will bring them back under control more often than not. Cut stop. It's not a very nice day. No, it's not. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. So next week we're going to um, hitching up a single horse to the shafts 
and I'm going to explain how to do that and how that works. And I'll try to show you some of the different implements that I've used in a single horse so that if, if you have a single horse that you want to um, have an idea of what you can do and I can give you an idea of some of the things that I've done with mine. So have a great day.